So I have a very, very important question to ask you. What's that? Did you make a wish at 11-11? Today on 11-11? I did not. You didn't? No. Did you know about it? I did not. I didn't know. I, I No, why? What's, what's the significance of 11-11? It's just a lucky thing. Call me superstitious. Is it like a birthday? Are you allowed to tell us what you wished for or you have to oh, not say anything? Oh, I cannot tell you what I wished for, but... <laughs> Do you, why did someone say you're not allowed to tell people what you wished for? Because it's all made up. <laughs> or maybe it's bad luck. Because maybe you have to keep the wish to yourself so that you can tell the universe and it's your own little secret until it comes true. <laughs> but doesn't that go against affirmations? Aren't you supposed to say to the world, because hmm. thoughts are things and what you say becomes true. Definitely agree, but I think affirmations and wishes are two different things. <laughs> I'm just talking out of my Now radio. here <laughs> is the thing about a wish. Does a wish almost seem like pleading where you're like hoping and putting out bad energy where if you put out an affirmation, it's more confirmation and positivity to the world? That would make sense except on special occasions such as one's birthday where there's a little extra magic in the air or 11-11 on 11-11. That's true. But speaking of 11-11, actually, there is significance in it. If you look at the numerology, if you follow that, um, some numerologists and new age philosophies believe that events linked to the time 11-11 appear more often than can be explained by chance or coincidence. And as an example of synchronicity, some authors claim that seeing 11-11 on a clock is, an, is a sign. Others claim that 11-11 signals a spirit presence. I've heard that a lot too, that when you see certain numbers like 444, I see that all the time. Yeah. They, they say that. Um, that was Jay-Z's album a couple years ago. What was? 444, I really? think. Really? Yeah. What well, was the significance of that, I wonder? Let's see. Jay-Z said, I woke up literally at 444 in the morning 4.44 a.m. to write this song. So it became the title of the album and everything. It's the title track because it's such a powerful song and I just believe one of the best songs I've ever written. I feel like you hear a lot of people wake up and see those numbers. I do, but I also think it's just you're more aware of numbers repeating itself. You know, like 237 doesn't have a significance, but if you hmm. see 444, you're like, oh, what are the chances? But also, too, if you really look into it, numerology has so many meanings, and that's something that, like, anytime I do see numbers, I always look up, and it depends if you believe in that stuff, but I think it's fun. Yeah. Uh, but 444 also... The meaning of 444 is to embrace everything that happens in your life by trusting how things are unfolding for you. And remember, you're exactly where you need to be right here and right now. So how perfect for Jay-Z. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I, I think it's always nice. I, I'm uh, Anytime you can think of something positive or yeah. wishing or, or praying or uh, affirming mm -hmm. something that you want into the universe. Because I do believe that when you're on a, a negative mindset the negative will come to you if you're on a positive mindset the positive will come to you and you just have to keep pushing forward on that so i like that that's yeah 11 11 today and it's 11. also veterans day it is veterans day and uh thank you so much with respect honor and gratitude thank you veterans it's crazy because i used to call my grandpa every single year on this day and we lost him a couple years ago god bless gramps miss you but um he served for i think it was 34 months he was overseas for six months and did 30 missions so i'd always call him because i loved hearing his stories and you remember gramps yeah. he had some crazy stories and there was one time when he was serving and they had to stop in la and he would, I would always beg him to tell me the story because, you know, we lived in L.A. for so long. And he's like, hey, Lissy, have you ever been to Hollywood and Vine? And those are, you know, it's an intersection. Yeah. You've been there. There are tons of restaurants, clubs. And I was like, yeah, Gramps, why? And he's like, well, I remember we had to stop there one time. And he goes, to my buddies and I would stop at that corner and... All the girls that would come by, we would grab them and like twirl them and give them a dance and a dip and they would just laugh and have so much fun. So at Hollywood and Vine, they were just always having like the best time and it just was such a memory in his life. So I remember for one of his birthdays, I got him this uh, sign that said Hollywood and Vine and he put it above his bed and he had Aww. it there for years. And I just, I will always remember that story. I loved it so much. <laughs>
Yeah, Hollywood and Vine, the famous so Hollywood special. Boulevard. I yeah. know. So sweet. But yeah, again, thank you to all the vets. What? And all the active military and everybody, I got to mm-hmm. tell you, it's, it's, you're just, you're, you're definitely braver than I am. You know, not, there, I don't think there was ever a moment, not even for a split second, did I ever think about going into the military to mm-hmm. uh, a firefighter, a nurse, a police officer. Um, so any, I, I just respect those lines of work so much because it takes a specific personality trait. Very courageous gene. And the, and the overall willingness yeah. to want to help. Yeah. And, um, and I, I have the urge to help and it just, it manifests in a different way. Mm-hmm. But the, the act of it in general, I said a few buddies who have made a career in the military and they really yeah. enjoy it. And then there's been people who haven't enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's really interesting that I never really, really, really thought of it. So mad respect to everybody who's uh, fighting for our country, who mm-hmm. has put their life on the line mm-hmm. for everybody who's the first line workers and, and the police officers, firefighters. God bless you. We appreciate thank you. you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank um, you. Well, let's hop in today's episode so we can start chit-chatting. Uh, welcome, everyone, to the Freddie and Alyssa Show. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe, like, comment, all that fun YouTube stuff. If you're listening on Facebook, uh, please be sure to like and follow. And if you're on an, uh, a platform like iTunes and you want to leave us a five-star review, that would be awesome. We appreciate you very much. We've been putting out content now for three years having an absolute blast, and we want to thank you for being on this journey with us. And today's episode, before we hop in, we have a wonderful sponsor, and I'm going to kick that over to Alyssa, and uh, you want to share the sponsor of the video with everyone. Oh, yes, guys. Today's sponsor is Faraday. Faraday is a family-run brand fueled by purpose and optimism. They make high-quality, sustainably-minded, feel-good favorites that you'll be proud to wear. This is clothing that's made not just to last a season, but a lifetime to wear. So if you look at our beautiful model, Mr. Freddie Smith, he is wearing a t-shirt by them. I love too the texture and how soft it is. That was the first thing I saw when I pulled it out. And for me, I'm wearing their gold-plated cuff. So they have all sorts of really cool things. And also too, 64% of their men's collection and 37% of the women's collection are made from sustainable materials. So their goal for 2021 is 85% for both collections. And they prioritize fibers like organic cotton, and they also strive to use non-toxic dyes and water efficient dyeing processes. So they are so wonderful and they have been so kind guys to give our listeners 25% off. So if you guys want to go to faritybrand.com, that's F-A-H-E-R-T-Y brand.com forward slash Freddie Alyssa. We'll bring you right there, our landing page and if you just go to their website, you also can always use Freddie Alyssa at checkout for 25% off. So thank you so much. Welcome to the family, Faraday. We're so happy to have you here, and uh, we appreciate you guys. So go check them out. Um, I'm loving this t-shirt here, I and um, I think Faraday might have been watching going, Freddie wears the same shirts too many times in a row. We need to send him clothing. <laughs> so uh, thank you, Faraday. We appreciate you so much, Get and uh, we're looking forward to uh, continuing to build our wardrobe with your amazing yes. um, clothing and accessories. So thank you so much. Um, Can so- I ask you a quick question? When do you think is a good time to start holiday shopping? I would say probably December 24th. <laughs> a big holiday shopper are you sir i think some people really uh take it to the next level on the gift giving and um i think because i feel weird receiving gifts that i don't um i'm not big on on giving one of your things but maybe that's just because you like you said you don't like receiving them for me i feel like i get such joy and i know i get this from my mom because i saw her do this my whole life just i get so much joy being creative and giving a gift to someone and just watching them open it and see how they feel yeah like there's just a different kind of joy i don't know i think that's a positive way to look at it i think (laughs) i think it's 50 50 split where people feel it's a stressful time it feels like a chore and i think just walking around or seeing something online and spontaneously giving a gift to somebody like bringing flowers home on a random day to me is better than you expecting them on valentine's day and then if they're not here on valentine's day being discouraged it just seems like too forced and i think giving should be a spontaneous act rather than a sophist unless it's for children yes christmas morning for children 
is the most magical time yeah. ever. But when you're in your 30s, I'm sure 40s, 50s, 100s, you're kind of like, how many, packs, the tree. <laughs> how many packs of socks do we have to get grandpa? Oh my gosh. So, yeah, but no, I, I think, I, you know, I, I mean, honestly, like we won't do, um, like, I mean, I, I know you do with your family, but we don't really, it's more like we might like send money or something, but it's yeah. never any sort of um, gift giving process. Right, yeah. You know, I think in my family, just growing up, it's always been a really big thing and surprising everyone in your family. I don't know. It's just what we did. Yeah. But everyone's different. Let us know. How do you guys feel about gift giving? Do you like it? Do you enjoy it? Or do you feel it's a hassle? Or maybe both? Yeah. Maybe you're a hybrid. Yeah. <laughs> you're a funny guy, Freddie. Very funny. I'm just practical. I'm practical. You're very practical. It just, yeah, it just doesn't... Um... Yeah, it just it just I think it's an it's an, an old school idea. You're you've always been like that. Like you really hate I not traditional things, but I guess things that are told to us by, you know, a specific um, society. industry or society. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, when you do I mean you you literally do research on even when we were looking up yeah. rings, the diamond industry yeah. created a the greatest marketing how can I say this in a fair a nice way? way. Um, a, the greatest marketing campaign. There you go. Um, in the history of 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 creating, the, the only thing that did it better was mortgages with banks uh-huh. for homes. Mm-hmm. They were the two greatest marketing campaigns that any industry has ever came up with. The fact that every woman needs a diamond ring from the diamond industry, and even said three times the. Uh, income to have value as a man is ludicrous. That's pretty naughty. Is that's, ludicrous. That's insanity. Um, and then the mortgage company, where the banks came up with the American dream in the '60s that every American should own a home because they could market that in a beautiful way. You right. see the pamphlets. It, the, the dad's <laughs> holding the son up in the kitchen. The mom's there with the daughter, and they're like, "Wow, the American family security." But it was created by the banks. So that people would take out a mortgage and then pay that interest yeah. on a huge amount of money that's being loaned. And that's what we went through on when looking at our options of buying a home. Because I was always listening to everyone in the world saying you need to buy a home, you need to put down your roots. And I bought yeah. into it. But what do I do when I look into something new? I started looking everything down, started writing down the numbers, started looking at averages. And when I put everything on paper, I was like, you don't make money on this. Right. But on the same note, and I totally get, and I do agree with what you're saying, how all the societal norms, you know, they were made up, but is it really so bad? Because even if you look at like the great pillars of life, like security is one of them. So being a- Thanks. (laughs) Do you work at a bank? I do not work at a bank. You sound like someone that works at a bank or in a bank commercial. (laughs) Let's submit this clip for you to work and do a Bank of America bank commercial. I'm just saying, like, if they didn't do that and have some sort of structure, what would people be doing? People would be using their money to invest, to have their money work for them and getting a 7% return. They'd have to be educated to know that. Exactly. So if the schools would have educated and put out a marketing campaign on financial literacy, (laughs) way more people would have cash flow and passive income and not be locked with all of their hard-earned money sitting in a house that they're not using to invest, but it does give you the sense of security, which is why in my mind, I would still do it. So I'm, I'm contradicting myself, but it's not a good financial decision. But at the end of the day too, people just want their overhead to be lower. So throughout the years, if you're paying it off, and I know there's a high interest, that's what the loan is, but eventually you'll get to a place, hopefully where like your parents' house is paid off. Yeah. Well they, well, they hit the lottery because they, in 1970, 1977 maybe, I don't know, I mean, I think that's when they got married, but I don't know when they got, when they built the house. My dad built our house for $30,000, so they got a loan out for 30000 and then over the years, they added on to the house, but they paid for that. So right. our house is worth what it's worth today, but they only took out a mortgage 30, well, it's been done now for 10 years, but they took out a mortgage on a $30,000 loan only. So, so at crazy. the end of the day, even if they paid $25,000 in interest over all those years, that's not bad. When you take out a loan for $300,000 and over a 30-year period, you're paying $225,000 additional interest mm-hmm. plus the property tax, plus the homeowner's insurance, plus the upkeep, the remodeling, the new washer and dryer, the new floors, 
the, the yard work, the lawnmowers. I mean, the list goes on of maintenance and you pay 2% closing costs to get into it. If you ever sell that, you have to pay 6%, three to agent, seller, three to the, to the buyer. Right. So you're losing 6% even if it has gone up. So there are abilities to own the house. And yes, it's nice because you're paying it off and your overhead goes down. But instead of using that 225 in just paying to the bank to say thank you over 30 years, if we were financially educated, including myself, where do you put that money instead so that you can have an asset that's paying you two, 3000 a month in passive income that you can then live in a place and rent it and you don't have to worry about anything, but your money's making money and you have the freedom to move, the freedom to do whatever you want. Like even here, our pool's cleaned, our lawn is mowed, the bushes are trimmed, the property tax someone else is paying, the homeowner's insurance someone else is paying, all the utilities somebody else is paying, Right. But, and I totally breaks. get that. But also, too, just to kind of play devil's advocate, you know, if you're taking that money and putting it elsewhere in hopes that it's an asset and it's making you money, what if it does the opposite and it doesn't and then you lost all that money and then you're stuck running forever? Well, you have to you have to <laughs> make calculated decisions and risks that but sometimes will, calculated risks don't know it doesn't always pan out but you can't just do a hail mary where you go i've worked i'm 38 years old i finally have twenty thousand dollars let me just throw a hail mary you have to continue to learn invest True. properly True. um some people are really into the stock market others aren't some people yeah. are really into real estate so you have to find where your niche is and bitcoin. what you feel <laughs> bitcoin um so many things i totally agree though it's just it's one of those things in life you just have to look at every single thing on paper and like we even were talking about the other day you just have to do kind of what's right for you do your own research figure things out yes and that's that exactly so i'm open either way yeah and i don't know if it's ever going to really change i think it's just a i think a lot of people are going to share their financial literacy um on the internet they're going to share it at seminars they're going to share it wherever people can learn it mm -hmm. And some people at certain stages of their life may, might take that and try something new. Yeah. Um, but but that's really what it boils down to. So, and as soon as one thing breaks down, it makes you look at everything that you're being told. Sure. Because if you're like, oh, the wedding thing, the wedding ring, and you find out about it all, you're like, oh. And then the mortgages with the banks, you go, oh. And then you're like, well, what else is being marketed to us? And then you realize, oh, everything. it's everything. Yeah. Life is just a marketing and sales funnel that we all are in and we're the american consumer and we see a t-shirt and we want to buy it we yep. see that I, I just saw apple they did their their your yearly conference oh my god this company is so legit they're the best they have the coolest upgrade for iphone 12 and um it's just nuts because i want so badly for us to get two new laptops they've improved the camera on the laptop for better sound and better oh. uh focus because so many people are on Zoom these days. So they've upgraded that. They have this amazing chip. Everything works faster because they know everyone is editing. They even said Lightroom. It's gonna be five times faster. Thank you, I need that. Can you imagine really quick too, I don't know if that, do you think this will happen? Where when you're FaceTiming or on a Zoom that they're gonna have face filters like they do? I feel so many people would like I'm that. I'm sure. Right, just to like have fun or soften the way you look or give you better lighting. Yeah, it's good that when that happens, that's going to be trippy. There's you think? there's one there's one other p portion of it that you know for me I, I don't even look at it as trippy. I just look at it as I'm expecting to be blown away at this point. And sure. they they they're doing something with this little chip that goes or this little thing that's going to go right here, and it's a lidar de uh, detection or scanner, and it's going to be able to uh, some of the self driving cars use it. Okay. But you're going to be able to take a video, and then you're going to be able to create augmented reality with your video. So it's not just going to be one dimensional. You're going to be able to go into that video and look around because the LIDAR is 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 um, taking a scan of everything around you. Uh -huh. And it's going to be really cool. So I don't I don't want to get I, don't, I, I just saw one quick video on it. So I don't know the accuracy of all that. But what's uh -huh. coming out the 5G and, and with this with the cell phones and 5G, people were saying we think, oh, 4G to 5G, it's one step. I heard it's like 30 times higher. Mm -hmm. And you can download an entire album of music by by a second. You can render films. You can do like five G is the um, what do you even call that? Not a service. I don't even know what you call five G. Whatever that is, is that is the technology that was needed for even um, telemedicine. That there's going to be artificial arms. So somebody in India 
could need a specific eye surgery. Oof. And because 5G is so fast and, and works so, there's zero delays, zero hiccups, there's a, 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 an eye doctor in Brazil could use 5G and through telemedicine using those arms do a surgery on somebody's eye in India because there's no lag time on 5G. So once they get this all settled, it's going to allow for telemedicine. It's going to allow for so many incredible things. And it's here. Yeah. So they just have to work on, wow. on coming up with that. Oh yeah. my gosh. Technology is crazy. I even saw, um, there's this agency I'm a part of for like bloggers and they'll pair you with different brands that they think would be a good fit. And there is this new workout, um, I guess like gear that you wear in their goggles, it's virtual reality. And you sit there and you do all of your workout classes, but it's virtual reality. And I go, huh? Yeah. Like that's gonna, that's crazy. And I was so curious about that. I don't even know who they are, what it was about, but I just go, isn't that interesting? But I wonder for me if I would get dizzy. Cause remember we did the virtual reality in Jersey last year. Yeah. And we were like in the ocean and there were like sharks and it was so creepy. It was like a little scary. I think it's it's also you're in public, you know, like even if you were going to do a story in the middle of a mall, you feel a little uncomfortable. If you're in the comfort of your own home, you feel more comfortable. Yeah. You're, you're there, you're paying or you're about to be sold a package yeah. and then your friends are outside, you're in a mall. <laughs> you're in some weird store that used to be, you know, a Spencer gift. <laughs> and now it's like some virtual reality, oh, like where you're the shark and I, gosh. it's all cool. But the moment that it becomes sophisticated where you can put your phone and it and you and they have it now but in a more sophisticated way and we're also going to need home docking systems mm -hmm. where we step into it that allows us to be able to move around like mm -hmm. on a bungee cord system where you don't bump into tables like right now you're going to smash your face on the wall so they need to build home um, like docking route, systems yeah. so that you can move around and be connected in. So when you are playing baseball or boxing or you're doing a workout class that you're not going to fall over and hit things. So that'll be big. And I think this was going to take a couple decades, but I think now because of the world, I mm -hmm. think everyone probably stopped a lot what they were doing and switched or expedited all of these in-home workouts, virtual mm -hmm. reality, because I still think even with a potential vaccine coming with um, everyone going back to normal. It's just, it's been too long. Yeah. If this would have been a one month thing and gone, we wouldn't have lost our reality. Right. Even if this goes away tomorrow, there's been too much time that the idea of doing certain things just doesn't seem um, convenient or reasonable anymore. Yeah. Well, do you remember too, we even looked at one wedding venue and they had VR goggles that you could send to guests that aren't gonna be there. Yes. So like they basically get their their phone and yeah. they put it into the VR goggles and they feel like they're there. Yep. Like that's going to happen. I mean, it's happening. It's going to be the norm very soon, which is just wild. Yeah. But you've got all of this technology, all of this stuff happening out there and all this innovation. <laughs> and I still don't understand why passwords can get hacked. Because I woke up this morning and I'm in my email and I'm looking, looking, looking. And all of a sudden I see that there are three emails at 7.30 that had already been open. And I go, that's weird. Cause I was not in my emails at 7.30. And I look further and it says that they were trying to change my Facebook password and that they were trying to get one of your emails. And so I had to go through and apparently I had a hundred passwords that there was a security breach through Google. And so I had to sit and change every single one. And the biggest issue is that this was my business email. So if someone was able to hack into that that quickly, I don't understand why I didn't get a text message. You know, the two, what's it called? The two verification. Two step uh, verification. authentication yeah. or something. Yeah. And so I called, you know, my provider and they're setting me up with all of that. But I don't understand how in this day and age with all this technology and innovation and people are still able to hack like that and it's not a problem? Like, what's that about? I don't know. I, I think it's the... Because I will get a text message. So I, I think I think a lot of this is phishing emails. I think there's a lot... I, I don't even think someone actually looked at your email because nothing changed. Nothing was taken. Nothing was changed. I think there could have even been some sort of virus that made you think that your emails were open. Perhaps. Because I, I would get a text message because especially on our YouTube, I have... 
um, the Google Authenticator on my phone, I need a text message, like to break into it, I'm gonna get so many, I have so many layers of security. So maybe it was like a virus that made you think that it was open so that you'd click on it. If there was a link in there, I'd have to double check and then you put in your information and password and they're like, haha, gotcha. I get those every day, but, but not on my open. Gmail, on my Yahoo which is interesting because I've had that email for so long that I bet you it's been shopped around so many times to be sold or who knows, but I've had that for about 16 years, my, my mm -hmm. Yahoo. And, um, but yeah, I get phishing emails all the time that goes, your PayPal account is now shut down. Click the link and retype in your information. And they're phishing emails. Cause if you look at where the email came from, it's never from at paypal.com. It's from at ZYT1 equals seven, like it's fake. But that's it's what fake. was sketchy about my emails that were open because they were actual, the exact same Facebook email, at like security at Facebook, whatever it is, it, was, it matched completely. So I was like, huh. Then there was another email stating that here's the code to get into one of your email addresses and I'm the recovery email on it. So I was like, this is just all a little scary. So long story short, changed all my passwords. Yeah, they have a, on the new laptop, they have a um, um, uh, thumb thing to do purchases and to go to Apple Pay, which I think is going to be smart. But that, that's got to be changed very quickly. The whole password thing is just, it seems like it's um, it old face? school. It's got to be your retina, your yeah. face scan, or your fingerprint on everything so that there can be no hacking. But then I guess people on the flip side will be like, oh, well, I don't want them to have... You know, then you can stick with the yeah. insecure passwords. Like I'm That's fine true. with my my face recognition and um, you know just so that it's safe. Because when we looked at yours, what Google has saved, there was 106 websites with passwords. Yeah. And so if you use the same password and someone on some <laughs> rinky dink website that we were on one in the morning one day and, and used yeah. our same password and that low level company gets hacked. And then they go, well, let me try this password on everything associated. Yeah, yeah. And then they get all our big accounts. So you have to have variations of your password. Yep. But how, then you don't remember 106 passwords. That's why you have a document like I do. You do. But then I was afraid if your computer's stolen, then they know. So you have to have secret codes. Well, I so do they have don't secret know. codes. We I don't know. have the exact word. I just have. Secret codes. Yeah. It's too stressful. It's very stressful. Scan my face. <laughs> let's move on. <laughs> Scan my face. <laughs> Oh my gosh. But yeah, just the simplicity of it. The simplicity of even the Tesla, you just, you, there is no key. You just use your cell phone. It's an app. Oh yeah. And they even have where you can have your car come to you. So if you're in a parking lot, you just say, come to me and the Tesla will drive up to you. So you just use your phone? Yep. There's no key? So if you are sophisticated, it's out there where you can have Google Pay, Apple Pay. If you drive a Tesla, you will only need to have your cell phone. You will never need a wallet. You will never need a car key. It's just, you grab your cell phone and you're, you're good to go. Nice. Yeah, it really is. So it, it'll slowly get there, but it's going to be nice for security and efficiency purposes. Mm -hmm. And um, but for the most part, everything's safe. Yeah, Every, everything goes well and, and, so. it's, and it's really good. But it's nice to have, you know, just pay attention for everyone who's listening to um, be very, very skeptical of any email you receive that needs you to update something. Go to the real website, log in on the actual website. Do not click on anything through your email. If it's a PayPal thing, go to your paypal.com and the dashboard will show you if something's wrong. Do not click through your email and give someone your login information. And also too, I've seen a lot of comments about this from time to time. Unless you see Freddie or myself on Instagram, with the verification, it's not him. Cause I've seen a lot of fake profiles that have been brought to my attention. And it's crazy that a lot of people will still do this. You even hear Mark Wahlberg. There's someone out there pretending to be him and people think it's him and then they're asking for money and it's crazy. So you yeah. just have to be so careful with who you're talking to. And it's also uh, fans. It's mega fans that are making the fake accounts mm -hmm. because the way that they're pretending to be me, because I get screenshots sometimes, yeah. the way they're pretending to be me, you can see they listen to everything we say mm -hmm. and they try to make it sound like us. It's not just a random person. So it's interesting that people do that, but I think yeah. they just do it for attention and for fun. I don't think they're actually trying to make money in a, like Mark Wahlberg's people, maybe. Yeah. Um, but but then again, I don't know. But um, but I've, it's it's very, very simple. It's, it's there's an, an official YouTube, there's our official Facebook and, and the blue check marks on both of our Instagrams um, or our tech service. If it doesn't come from the actual number or the blue check marks or our official thing, it's never us. Like we're never gonna, 
if we're ever saying anything about money when it comes to like, hey, here's a t-shirt or hey, here's our membership program or whatever it is, it's us saying it yeah. on a platform. I would never text a fan individually and say, hey, you need to sign up for our membership program. Right. That's, first of all, it's too hardcore of a sale. Yeah. I don't like that. Yeah. And I would never ask someone and make them uncomfortable to have to say yes or no. I like sharing things if we are selling or marketing something out in the, you know, so that people can passively hear it and say yes or no, but there's no weirdness or friction about it. So I will yeah. never go to you directly, <laughs> ever, directly to Sally and say, you need to buy something. So if anyone ever writes you directly wanting you to buy something or give them money, it's never us. We will never do that. You heard it here first. And also just in general, be careful with you know, who you're chatting with, because I have heard again from a few people on our Facebook that from time to time on some of our videos, there will be different accounts that go and they start talking to people in the comments, but then there's something that they're trying to scam, like getting money, whatever it might be. So just be careful, you know, yeah. make sure that everyone is vibing out, vibe attracts your tribe, you know, you'll feel yeah. it, you'll know. If someone seems like it's not legit, then it's probably not. It is, and it's good to know now. It's it's really good to know because as we're growing and as we're building, mm -hmm. there's only going to be more. Unfortunately, just the the numbers of yeah. it, you know, the 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 probability. Um, the bigger you get, the more scams there can be in the mix, and that's mm -hmm. why you see the Mark Wahlbergs of the world. Jesus, the <laughs> amount of fans around the world that he has. That's why I'm saying the chances of a huge scam going on at that level is yeah. more likely. Do you remember that one time I left a comment on one of his videos and the comment like went viral with likes, if you will. And the next morning it was deleted. It was deleted. I was like, what's that about? <laughs> I was so upset. I don't know. <laughs> Just it made no sense. Guess we'll never know, Mark. <laughs> Come on, Mark. Come on, Mark. <laughs> You're ruining our moment here. <laughs> He's got, he's got, he's one of the coolest people. I'm a huge fan of him. Me too. He's just had an incredible career because he started out rapping as Marky Mark, literally like in his underwear on stage, like just really young. And then that evolved. He had an excellent movie career. He's just a really great human. Like so many people I feel that got famous that young could be really crazy later in life. Yeah. But he's just like kept his stuff together. He was his young, um, at a good age, mm -hmm. the DiCaprio, Tobey Maguire, uh -huh. Mark Wahlberg, that whole generation was able to go wild. Good and if anything media. ever happened, the publicist could call the publication and get it killed. Nowadays there's cameras and there's no coming back. Sure. So they were, they were hot and going crazy. I think even like the Tom Cruises and Rob Lowe's and all the 80s and 90s and early 2000s, even for us, mm -hmm. the 2006 to 2010 was off the internet. Yeah. So a lot of the crazy and mature <laughs> stuff was never captured. Yeah. So um, I feel for the kids now because their dumb, immature mistakes as a young person figuring out who they are, taking risks mm -hmm. and chances mm -hmm. are now being documented and going to be in the internet forever. Our dumb mistakes weren't. They weren't. You even see, too, all these young YouTubers or TikTokers and, you know, they're just figuring out, like you said, who they are, but they are very much in the limelight and all of their breakups and the cheating and the crazy stuff that young kids go through. What do you expect? Money, success, Hollywood. Like, it's just going to be insane when you're young mm -hmm. and these kids are all just doing it on camera. Yeah. I saw um, New York Times did an article about the Pfizer vaccine. Oh, yeah. And I guess apparently it's like 90% working, I guess. Um, but I wanted to look at it. Do you, should I pull it up? Yeah. Let's see what we, what we got okay. there. So they just announced it a couple days ago. I know. But I didn't read into it yet just because I'm, I just heard about a vaccine and you hear about all these medicines like all the time and you're like, well, is it coming? Is it just in 90% trial or is yeah, it like, like what's coming? what's that mean? You know, yeah. is it? Okay. Yeah. So they had... Pfizer's vaccine, things you need to know. In July, Pfizer and BioNTech initiated a late stage clinical trial on a coronavirus vaccine. Half of the people got the vaccine while the other half got a placebo of salt water. The companies then waited for people to get sick to determine if the vaccine offered any protection. So far, 94 participants out of nearly 44,000 have gotten sick. That's actually like pretty good 
Yeah. Only 94. An independent board of experts looked at how many of those people got the vaccine and how many got the placebo. That early analysis suggests the vaccine is over 90% effective. Interesting. But 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 the but but for 44,000 people took a vaccine. 44,000 people took a vaccine. Mm-hmm. You can imagine 22,000 the real vaccine, 22,000 placebo vaccine. Mm-hmm. But did the 44,000 people become in contact and with the you know what? Were they exposed? Yeah. But that that's interesting. Like wouldn't you rather see a controlled clinical trial of that? I mean, I don't want people to get it, of course, but you'd probably have better Well, that was my whole that was my problem even with some of those the, like the grocery cart and gas pump <laughs> research they did. They go, "We swabbed 1,000 gas pumps and and it was only on two of them." Well, yeah. <laughs> Statistically, but you have to have somebody with it sneeze on a thousand gas pumps uh-huh. and then swab a thousand gas pumps. Or the same with the cardboard boxes and packages. I remember for a while, everyone's like, that's how everyone's getting it. Yeah. Like, but then they go, well, we, well, we, well, we swabbed 10,000 um, Amazon boxes and there, there's only one case. Yes, but you need people <laughs> with it to cough and touch it and then swab it. Yeah. You can't just say, well, that's not what we're asking here. Uh-uh. Statistically, it's not going to be on people or it, people aren't going to have it statistically and it's not going to be on our boxes mm-hmm. statistically. The question we want to know from the scientist is that if somebody with it coughs on a gas pump handle, <laughs> how long does it live on it? <laughs> that's all we want to know. It's a very valid question. That's it. If they go, we had 1,000 people cough on a gas pump. And 1,000 results came back that if it's touched in your eye five minutes after, you will get it. If it's 10 minutes, half got it. And if it's an hour, no one gets it. Fantastic. So after an hour, no one can get it on the gas pump. That's what I want to see is a thing. So did these 44,000 people for sure get in contact with it? Who knows? It's a good question. Let's write them. And they're not going to give 44,000 people no the sickness that's a really interesting point of view though unless i'm missing maybe a scientist is going no 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 no, freddie you don't understand but <laughs> i'm just thinking you know. <laughs> but, but it makes sense it's a to good me. question yeah valid hmm and of the 94 people were what happened 94 got sick but also two they've gotten sick so is that just people who have symptoms what about asymptomatic What's the percentage of people that have gotten this that are asymptomatic? What if there's 40,000 of them who have it, but they're asymptomatic? Were all 44 tested? I don't know. Just reading what they got. Well, let's see. Let's see what else they have to say. Yeah, but it's, it's hard to hear what they're going to say if that doesn't make that. Like, it's like if they're not going to have those statistics and of the 94, how bad was it? Did anybody get hospitalized? Did they have just a sniffle? <laughs> or are question. they saying that 94 people out of 44,000 were the only people who even got it? Meaning that of the other 22,000 who were given the actual thing, only 94 of those 22,000 got it. Meaning this is a 90% effective vaccine because the other 22,000 never got it. I would have rather read 94 participants out of nearly 44,000 have tested positive for blank. Yeah. Not just have gotten sick with it. What's that mean? Well, I'm sure that means that they have gotten sick. That yeah, the but vaccine not everyone did, gets sick. The vaccine did not work on 94 people is what I think this boils down to. Okay. So okay. 94 people, the vaccine did not work. Okay. So now they're probably going to study those 94 and go, why did the, these 94 uh-huh. people? Oh, it's because they all had diabetes or it's because they right. all, you know, whatever it may be. Um, which will be interesting to, to hear. Yeah. But we just need some clear answers is what we've all been waiting for. Yeah. Where I'm down to do whatever the scientist and that the government who is taking our tax money is paying these companies or the companies that are maybe aren't taking it, whatever it is, is you have the resources. We are the Americans here. Just tell us what to do. Do yeah. a real study on the mask that is universal. Do a study on the coughing. Do a study on the boxes. And there needs to be a way for us to come back and and have trust again 
when mm-hmm. somebody comes on TV and tells the world what to do. Amen to that, sir. Because we don't know. So how are you supposed to ever accomplish anything when you only when only 60% of people believe what's being told to them, the other 40% aren't following it? Yep. Hmm. Let's move on to the next thing that they say we need to know. Okay. Is the Pfizer vaccine safe? So far, Pfizer and BioNTech have reported no serious safety concerns from their vaccine. Before running the current large-scale study, the companies ran smaller clinical trials starting in May that were specifically designed to detect warnings to detect warning signs about the vaccine safety. They tried out four versions of their vaccine and selected the one that produced the fewest cases of mild and moderate side effects, such as fever and fatigue. If their vaccine receives an emergency authorization from the FDA and gets disrupted, or can, can I read, and gets distributed to millions of people, the Centers for Disease Control and the FDA will monitor them to make sure there's no evidence of even rare safety issues. Participants in the trial will also be monitored for two years. So they're going to monitor them for two years, but then also put a vaccine out without no like... Yeah, I mean, that's probably just the, the smart thing to do is that everybody who's participating needs to get monitored for two years so that in the future they will have understandings if there are other um, strands like, or oh, anything yeah. similar. So that's a good a good idea. But I, yeah, I get your point where it's like that's not going to help us now. Um, but they're doing what they can, right? What, well, what, what else, else are you going to do? do? Yeah. My, my whole thing, I was more, I was more um, rooting for... Uh, instead of a vaccine of pumping something in you as a precautionary measure, I was excited for a therapeutic that if you got this, it was like a sinus infection where you're just like, oh, you feel like crap for three days, but you can take an antibiotic. Right. Or is that for sinus infection? Well, whatever. Just something that you can go and get an IV or take a pill so yeah. that only when you have symptoms – that you go, oh, like I'm going to go and, and handle this. It's not this. so terrifying to get it. It's not terrifying know. to get yeah. it. So you could do the herd, herd immunity thing, mm-hmm. you know, but then if you have asymptomatic people who are then passing it to the vulnerable, I can see why they want a vaccine to kind of do all that. Yeah. But so that's interesting. Um, what, what else are they saying? Okay. So who will get the new vaccine first? Pfizer's chief executive has said that it could have 30 to 40 million doses of the vaccine before the end of the year enough for 15 to 20 million people to get an initial shot and a booster three weeks later. Exactly who will qualify for the initial doses has not been decided, but groups that are at higher risk for infection or more vulnerable to the virus are likely to get priority. That could include healthcare workers as well as older adults and those who have risk factors like obesity or diabetes. Pfizer and BioNTech say they could ramp up to 1.3 billion doses a year. That's still far from enough to satisfy the world's need for vaccines. If other vaccines also prove effective, companies will be able to manufacture them as well and help meet the demand. Okay. Very interesting. So we'll probably have more information if they can actually get these out to the 15 million people. Yeah. So whoever's going to be the brave first 15 million. Well, I mean, even like they said, though... People or groups that are at higher risk for infection, they're probably more likely to want to try it. Wouldn't you say? Just to be like, well, you know what? If I'm at higher risk. Yeah. Might- and maybe people who are comfortable with shots. Mm-hmm. You know? Because if, if you get the seasonal flu shot all the time, yeah. maybe it feels better. But for like for myself, you know, I've only had... Yeah, I've only... I mean, other than a tetanus shot um, in 2014, I got. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's it. Like, I haven't had any shots other than when I was a child. I remember when Jules was born, our niece. My sister's like, you guys have to get these shots because you legit have to if you want to be in the room with the baby. I can't remember exactly what they were. But my dad and I waited until, like, the night before. Cause but you like, did go get them? Yeah, you had to. See, I wouldn't have gone in. <laughs> You're so annoying. <laughs> well, that's some of the – that's some of the – there's also when we went to Thailand – I remember we did research because um, you have to get some sort of, was it a... Malaria, maybe? Or there's some sort of shot that you have to get to go to Thailand, but not into the cities. So when we did research, they're like, that's if you're going to go off the the grid and go into the seclude, secluded parts and the jungles and stuff. 
Yes. Yeah, so if you go to Thailand, um, they want you to get vaccinations for hepatitis A, B, yellow fever, rabies, meningitis, polio, measles, mumps. Yeah, I'll go to Vegas <laughs> instead. Thank you. <laughs> no, we, we went. We went to Thailand. But when you do more research on it, that's if you're gonna start. If you're gonna go and eat the street food, yes. if you're gonna go into like the off the beaten path, um, which that's really not us anyway. No, I have no interest <laughs> in that. But there are people who love that. Put yeah. on a backpack, walk yeah. through the jungles, eat the street food. Like you've got. Like I won't even eat street food in Hollywood. <laughs> After a club, three o'clock in the morning, bacon wrapped hot dogs. Carl's Jr. is right down the street. I'll oh go there. Oh my gosh. I think I've done that a few times, like years ago. I did ago. when I was young. Yeah. I remember someone told me, like, don't eat that. Don't eat that. And I was like, oh, it tastes so good. It tastes so good. <laughs> How much is it? $3? Here's a 10 <laughs> Do you have any shots behind that cart? No. I remember I wanted to go do that on uh, club lines, but they were like the club would, would kick you out. Oh, I was like, what a business. Selling yeah. drinks to people waiting in line. Have yeah. music going outside and sell drinks to but people. Do you have the alcohol permit? Well, the club would be like, no, people are going to get too drunk and then they're not going to buy in here. Not gonna or they're going to be more drunk and they'll buy more. But hmm. Maybe there's a reason it's never been done. It's not yeah. popular. <laughs> but I, li I like it. I like the ideas, enthusiasm. But the whole shot thing, I I'm, I'm not against them, but I just have not had any shots yeah. as an adult other than a tetanus shot. Um, I feel like you don't like needles. I mean, if I would get it if it was like a thing, but if, you know, at the same time, you know, we just have to see what it all happens, it but happens. we're not, I'm not going to be on the list of the first ones anyway. <laughs> it's going to be people who are older, the front frontline course, workers and like, course. and uh, so we kind of get a pass to kind of just see what the first 30, 40 that's million shots do and um, how they work. And well, that's the next question is when will the general public be able to get it? Pfizer has said that it will likely apply for emergency authorization in the third week of November after it collects the two months of safety data that the FDA has asked manufacturers to submit. Then the agency will consult with an outside advisory committee of experts and may take weeks to pour over detailed data about the vaccine safety, effectiveness, and the company's ability to safely manufacture millions of doses. The vaccine could be authorized for certain high-risk populations before the end of the year, but that would only happen if everything goes as planned and there are no unforeseen delays. So that's interesting. No unforeseen delays. Aren't there always unforeseen delays? Yeah, we'll <laughs> <Always>. see. <laughs> we'll see what happens. But but even let's say everything goes well, um, it still looks like best case scenario we're in this for another six months. Probably all of 2021. Yeah. And, um, you know, it, it seems like we might have the air quote normal back, which is gone. But like the idea yeah. of you don't have the extra stress uh, leaving the house, it seems, you know, Probably like 2022. I agree. I mean, I think this is something we're going to live with for quite some time, kind of like the flu. But it'll get better. It'll. Oh, absolutely. You know, and yeah. all these businesses is like, I went to TJ Maxx. They have all the, the plexiglass in between, and, and companies aren't going to take that down. No. Why would you? Because then you have to pay the money if another thing happens in three years it's from true. now. Keep it up. So, so that's all going to. Yeah, that'll all change. But as long as people can go back to work, I think that's my biggest. Um, concern is like a number one people have to stay healthy and number two mm. people have to be able to go to their jobs for everyone who lost their job because of it sucks the fact that you have to wear a mask or you can't go and be in a packed club right now like that's a sacrifice but it's more because of the jobs yeah that's the the sad part well, the is, is not that we have to sacrifice a little fun because they're inventing new ways to have fun in the way that we're doing yeah. things but it's the you know what what did the restaurants make when the club was packed what did the parking the the people who own those parking lots twenty dollars a car the people who work there it just it's it's a ripple effect and um so that's why i'm rooting for it you know it's like i've kind of gotten used to this and my biggest thing is just being able we're finally here we're finally close to the family and yeah. they can't come for thanksgiving <laughs> and christmas life that's so crazy to I me. Know. That's I know. so crazy. I know. But what can we do? Follow protocol, educate ourselves, be safe. Is it raining? It's just extremely windy. It's so unique to be 
in Florida when, because LA you're spoiled. It's just 75 and sunny with no humidity, no wind, nothing. It's just, you kind of exist. Uh-huh. We're here, you're seeing clouds, dark clouds, blue skies. You're seeing, you're hearing wind, big winds, little rain, tropical rain, big rainstorms, little drizzle. I love it though. It's just a mixture. I and then it's like it. extremely muggy and then it's not. And so it's just a an interesting, like what a tropical, cool culture. Yeah. Not culture, climate. Climate. Um, I guess it's culture. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the but it's just really nice that you look outside and and it kind of just um, it, you feel more one with the um, planet. Earth and planet, yeah. Because you're, you're you're aware of the wind blowing you and then the rain and it it happens. It's not like you're like oh I'm just in rainy season and I can't wait for this to be over. No, it's all in one day yeah. so you're you're just always in these emotions and these moods that you're like oh it's sunny now it's raining but when it rains you're not cold right and it's crazy because we're getting a little extra i feel like rain and wind from that tropical depression or hurricane it keeps going back and forth ada i think that's her name what they named her oh yeah i saw a video from miami was flooded or parts of it maybe yes but so we're getting some of that. And because we're getting that, I saw last night when I was letting him out, it was kind of raining a little bit. It's more muggy. Are you feeling that too? Yes. And there was like this bright green little frog. And he kind of scared me at first because he was just hanging out there. But all these critters are coming out because the climate's not generally like this, at least at this point. So you're seeing all this different stuff, but we're very lucky that we're only getting, you know, the outskirts of everything. But when I saw too, Miami was literally flooded and this guy had just gotten in from the airport and he had like water up to his knees getting out of the, the cab and he's just like, yeah, I'm going to take pictures for my family. They're not going to believe this. Yeah. It's wild. And yeah, that's the interesting part about South Florida because as we look for a, a, a place to settle eventually, um, I really like it, but there's also issues like that where the middle of the the state, you have a little less, but then you're not close to a beach and... But also, too, I mean, I grew up in South Florida. Fine. And, I mean, maybe I was in one, two major hurricanes. It's not like we're going to buy property. <laughs> unless we want to burn money. Bump, bump. What a good callback. What a good callback. <laughs> yeah. See, the goal is to get all your other bills down. So all you have is no overhead and then just your rent. Just your rent. Or your mortgage. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. No, I do want to buy a house. I know, I do too. Well, because it is yours. Because even here, as much as I like it, it's not my couch. It's not, no. you know, we, we can't paint. We can't drill holes, especially in this situation we have because we're just here for six, seven months. Yeah. Like I would never. Um, but just to have your home. That you, you can know knock down a wall you do? if you want. Yeah. You can do anything you want to it. And um, once we get our furniture here... There's a couple adjustments we're going to make, but not with like the walls, just putting furniture. Just a couple. We were thinking about even potentially bringing in our green curtains again and kind of, you know, fixing all that stuff. But the the shipping process has been insane. It takes, they have legally in the contract up to 30 days to give us our furniture. And we, we requested it October 28th, but it's 30 business days. So that's an so extra that's like good. week because of um, we missed that fine print, didn't we? <laughs> yeah, we were stressed, so it was it, we we missed all that. But I would have, but then, but if we were going to be moving, I'd be so pissed. But the fact that we're not moving, it we doesn't, it doesn't matter if yeah. we get. I mean, I want my Christmas decorations. Me too. But if we can get it by Thanksgiving, I just love making Thanksgiving dinner, and that's when you decorate. Yeah. So they have, like. 15 days so we're time not gonna get it by then is a passing by time is a ticking what time's a ticking time is a ticking route 66 <laughs> yeah they're not gonna get it we won't have it by thanksgiving unfortunately oh goodness but we, we might have it like early december and I hope, if i can't put a tree up i'm a beat well we could just get another one but that's expensive we bought a nice one knowing we're gonna keep it so and all my mom's pretty decorations she made <laughs> yeah come on it's gonna happen manifesting it baby It'll be here by Thanksgiving. There's just a couple little things that just need to be ironed out that we're waiting on. Yes. You know, of just even our security deposit check is so bizarre that we, for the first time ever, we were so excited because if we're going to do this Airbnb life for a little bit, there's no security deposit you put down. So every time we've got an apartment, we've put down a hefty 
security deposit. Mm -hmm. So our last apartment in LA was $2,950 for rent. So that's usually what the security deposit is. But then they want an extra 500 because of the dog. So we ended up paying 3450 Yeah. For or maybe it was four hundred fifty bucks. I think it was thirty four hundred even. Oh, that's the wind blowing that. Um, and then the uh, and then when you, and then we would usually get a portion of that back because they would paint and take it from us. But then we would use that same. You know, if there's twenty seven hundred left over, we would put it on our new apartment. So right. we never got to keep that money. And now we're so excited because we're like we don't need to put it anywhere because we're gonna do Airbnb mm -hmm. until we do end up uh, when I succumb. And I just end up buying a place um, yeah. because we he were sold. We were sold the dream. We were sold it. the dream. <laughs> and um, but the reason I do side note that I do think it's interesting to buy is it's also going to be our work and home, mm -hmm. and I want the ability to to make the inside of it the way that I want. If you're going to rent for just a year and have to deal with with things. Like we, you and I need four or five different spaces in our house that's dedicated for office space, for an editing space, for one-off videos, for podcasting. We need yeah. all these different spaces. So I do think I want to buy um, as much as I talk crap on it. But but yeah, for the first time, I, I just want the security deposit. And the landlord sent it out and it got lost the first time. Now the second time, it was scanned in last Saturday. And we called the post <sighs> office and they don't know where it's at. I was like, people... It's a potential three thousand four hundred dollar check. That's a lot of money. <laughs> I know. That's what I told the woman I was chatting with. Give us the money. Now there are investigators involved, and we're wonderful. Wait, we're waiting to hear. Because if them. not, we have to call back our landlord again and say, "Hey, we're sorry, but can you have your accountant send this and have us sign at the door?" Oh, I want no. my money. <laughs> so if it was anything, and you know what, everything else comes. Everything else. We get the fifteen percent off Geico announcement. <laughs> that doesn't get lost, but my thirty four hundred dollar check gets lost. I want my money. You want y'all show me the money, baby. Show me the money. Show it up. Show it up. Well, that's a big chunk. If it was like 125 bucks, I'd be like, okay. Of course. That's like a it really fancy dinner. Lost. But that's... 3400 we can get stuff done. And I just paid my SAG dues, which was so expensive. Because when you make some cash money in the business, the SAG dues are, exp are high. They are very high. But they're a year behind. Uh -huh. So on, so SAG after if everyone who doesn't know this, SAG after, SAG and after used to be two unions. Now mm -hmm. they've combined like five years ago. So it's SAG after. It's the actors' union. It's where all the residuals run through. It's how you get protections. And uh, to be honest with you, love you SAG after. I don't know what you've personally done for me. I just know people who've complained. You call SAG after if there's a problem or people are being overworked or it's unsafe work environments. Hey, they, they protect got you. Good you. health insurance though. And the health insurance is so. the big deal. So once we get married too. Um, we had the best health insurance and it's so cheap for two people now understanding how much health insurance is because I've been on the SAG after forever, but, um, that's delayed as well, which worked in our favor. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to, so if you make a hundred thousand dollars in 2019, you are, your dues in 2020 are from 2019's mm -hmm. income. So what was interesting is that I haven't worked this year, so I'm paying dues on my 2019 year. So it's like a expensive dues, yeah. even though I didn't work this year. Yeah. But then my dues in 2021 will be less because I didn't work on the show full time um, from this from SAG. But it works in our favor with the actual health insurance. So you and I looked at it, and because of when these residuals and when our payments have come through with the timing, we have health insurance with SAG-AFTRA legally and officially and qualified through September of 2022. So we've met all the minimums all the way till then because this residual check that came through cleared us uh, over the top of what we needed to make in that time frame for that year. Amazing. So we have the best health insurance, especially when we get married and tie the knot, will be covered till September of 2022. And then if I make a certain amount of money in the industry or you make a certain amount of money in the industry under our SAG-AFTRA, because I think you have to make at least, I think it's... Twenty-seven thousand mm -hmm. dollars to qualify for mm -hmm. the health insurance. Because there are a lot of people who are part of SAG-AFTRA, but they don't make that much. You know, they might get a commercial here, or maybe book guest star here. So that that's kind of crazy, though. And that also, too, what about people who have worked for ten years and then they just are off a show? They just don't get health insurance. They have to <laughs> go pay a lot for it. It's kind of weird. Yeah, you you would think you're you're just like oh there's somebody who for ten years 
makes $27,000 for 10 years straight, they qualify. But then what if someone makes a million, a million, a million, and then nothing for seven years and they don't get the health insurance? I mean, they'll just pay a higher premium elsewhere, but my goodness. Well, I just didn't realize how high health insurance was until, because I've been on the union the whole time. So once yeah. I, when I go, oh, wow. Mm-hmm. Health insurance for a couple, that's not through an actual discounted, um, you know, from your work or from something like that. It's expensive. And I remember too, after our car accident, I was on a Cobra and that was like a thousand dollars a month. Why did we have to do that for three or four months? I can't remember. Because if you would have went to a new one at that time, because the accident happened, there was I some... had to be under the same insurance for the doctors or whatever to be maybe paid for. Because I think if you would have got a new health insurance because that they wouldn't accident... want to take me on yes i just had that that's what it was i think they call, they call that pre-existing potentially oh, i didn't know enough at that time but i all those little things added up during that time well what else is crazy that you and i have recently looked into is how much money you save as a couple on taxes if you're married yeah it's very very uh it's agitating insane. that if i we... never had an accountant tell me in a nice manner, hey, kiddo, <laughs> you've been together for 10 years, and with the amount of money you make as a single man in Los Angeles, oh. if you got married, you would save thousands of dollars. Mm -hmm. Might be something to look into. Would have loved to have heard that three years ago because we could have <laughs> legally done it and saved a ton of money, a down payment on a nice house kind of money. I mean, Eve, imagine if like our whole relationship, we were just like, hey, let's do it for the taxes. <laughs> I that that's more of like or a fun we love thing each other too, but but I'm saying realistically I don't think we would have done that but I think around 16 or 17 we were ready and would have done it um legally totally um if we would have known that and um and the same thing with the health insurance this mm -hmm. whole time it, it all adds up because over the past three years of what you pay monthly oh, so much it's it's essentially a hundred and fifty hundred and sixty dollars dollars a month less for you to be on mine mm -hmm. so over the years that's like another let's say two thousand a year over the past four years is eight grand yep. not to mention the all the taxes being saved and all like the benefits of being married is just really is remarkable it's just crazy you wouldn't think to hey let me educate myself on this but these are really People told us probably yeah but but in a way of of um you know you should get married you know if you get married you'll also save but it, like saving, meaning meaning what? If I bring coupons into the grocery store, I save? <laughs> no, no, no. I'm talking down payment of a house savings. Yep. Then you got my attention. I thought it was going to be like 1200 bucks or something, yeah. which is still a lot of money. But I was just like, oh, we're not going to get married on paper to ruin that moment because of $1,200 a year. Right, right. 2021, I'm rooting for it. It's going to be a good year for everyone. It's gonna be good vibes. And even even for fun. even for us too, I think with all the math that I did, um, being a single man in California and uh, for tax purposes, um, and being a married man in Florida for tax purposes is uh, exactly half with living expenses and with tax incentives, making hypothetically three hundred grand in California or making 150 grand as a married couple in Florida with living expenses, taxes, and single and married at the end of the year is the same. Wow. Isn't that insane? <laughs> it is. Huh. And that's based off of buying a home because I did the square footage of like a three bed, two bath house in California at 1500 square feet. So three bath, two bed, 1500 square feet home in California in a reasonable like Burbank, mm -hmm. pretty fair, not Hollywood or West Hollywood or right. Bel Air, right. just Burbank, Sherman Oaks, is about 800,000. In Florida, in a reasonable place, is, is about 325. And so the monthly payments and the down payments and everything is significantly different, the property taxes and like everything. So cost of living, even from gas to the insurance, car insurance, yeah. just everything. Yeah. Um, I ran all the numbers, and if you if if I were to go out as a single man in California and make three hundred, or we were to stay here and make one fifty, it's exactly the same. So why not That's live crazy. life and do your what you want? Well, because in order, because here's the interesting part. 
to make 300 in California and 150 in Florida is the same um, uh, um, level uh, lifestyle. What do you call that? Um, the same lifestyle. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm blanking on the word. But if but making 300 in Florida now doubles that standard of living. Standard of living. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. It would take six hundred thousand dollars in California, six hundred of what you could do for three hundred in hmm. Florida. But here's even the best part: if you don't look at numbers like that, and you look at more of a six-figure income, a hundred thousand dollars in California is fifty thousand dollars in Florida. But making fifty thousand dollars in Florida, being married with no state tax, you're paying peanuts in taxes, like legit peanuts, compared to what a single man uh. in the multiple six figure range pays. So it's just very fascinating. It looks like you get married and living in Florida, baby. <laughs> See, you went, you went with the love, you went with companionship, you went with babies. All you had to do is slide me a piece of paper, or have a dry erase board that goes, "Look, babe." And then you would have turned and go, where are you? And then I'd be in a tuxedo with a boutonniere and my best man next to me going, are we going to do this thing or what? Oh my gosh. You know, the one thing we have to do is I wanted to let everybody know we should have done it at the beginning, or I guess we don't need to, that we're going to start this whole new schedule. I yes. wonder if we should do that as an announcement. We'll do it as an announcement, but if you're listening right now, yeah, just know we've decided we're going to do every Wednesday is like the mega podcast yes. as we discussed so know that every wednesday did we discuss a time have we come down to an actual we haven't but i think it's going to be a little later yeah because if you and i feel it's better for the week to film it wednesday we have more time to film edit and get it out yeah. three o'clock we have to especially a mega podcast would have to be shot no later than starting at 9 a.m Mm -hmm. to get it out at three. And there's certain times that if we wake up at eight o'clock and we're doing research or we're running a little late, it's better for us to have that extra hour or two yeah. to even get started at 1030 one day, knowing we can still get it out by yep. five. And now with the mega podcast, it's essentially people are going to know that they just have this. So I think people are going to A, hop on Wednesday and watch when we air it, or they're going to know Every Wednesday it comes out, Friday morning's best for me. And sure. that will just be when they watch Freddie and Melissa's show. How I do it with, with Tim Dillon. Yeah. It's like every Sunday at noon when I'm, like that's when I watch that's my hour and a half it. of him, even though it comes out on Saturday yeah. evening. So I think people will find the day and we're already seeing the results. A lot of people did want Wednesday, which was really great from all the different comments that I was looking at. Yeah. So. We really appreciate you guys letting us know what you think. Um, we're really excited, feeling really good just about everything that's happening, kind of the new schedule we're going to be doing for the podcast. And I felt even today I was able to just sit and talk and get into it and not worry about like, ah, we got to stop it. We don't have enough time. We got to get, you know, Yeah. it was just kind of nice to sit and talk and, um, you know, see where the conversation goes. Yeah. So, so that's going to be great. We, we're going to do Wednesdays uh, for the public and then we're going to do Sundays for the members. Yes. So if you want an additional podcast, it's going to be members only. So not just the video, but it's yeah. exclusively members only podcast. And the first three Sundays mm -hmm. will be video and the last Sunday will be live like we've been doing it for members. So if the Wednesday mega podcast isn't enough, Freddie and Alyssa for you and you want to become a member, you'll get an additional podcast every Sunday. Mm-hmm. And even the last Sunday of every month is live yep. where you can ask questions, but that'll allow us to just focus on the mega podcast Wednesday, the members podcast on Sunday, and then we're going to, we're going to shoot at least one vlog a week. Mm -hmm. And we're working on a few other iterations because we want to post more. Yeah. So we're, we're learning, we're growing. We did the plan do review. And now that we've sat into it, we've figured out the new schedule. So since this is at the end of the podcast and a lot of people might miss it, we'll do an independent video and let people know what's good. Maybe we'll put it out tomorrow or Friday, Perfect. probably Friday. Yeah. Say, hey everyone, happy Friday. Here's the new schedule. Here's the new clips channel, go subscribe. Love because it. we have to get up to a thousand subscribers there to um, have AdSense kick in. Oh yeah. So for it to be a monetized channel, we have to get up to a thousand subscribers. So I think we can probably um, do that in a few, few weeks yeah. just by sharing it. And we have enough um, supporters that'll hop right over there and really like it. 
Um, but yeah, but let's let's uh, let's wrap this up. We did an hour and a half today. We're getting used to it. I definitely yeah, need more water me next time. Too. I went, the dog I, can't sit on my lap because it yeah. gets warm over here. We need to see if we can order a uh, movie, uh, uh, a film set fan. Oh, it spins so silently. Nice. I need that. It would be great because we turn the air off. To anyone who doesn't know, because it's pretty loud and we don't want it to be picked up in the microphone. So that being said, it's kind of warm. I learned my lesson today. Don't wear long sleeves. Don't wear a long skirt. Don't have a hot doggy on your lap for the first hour. We got to get him a chair. I know. With our podcast chair, he sat in that right next to you. But these chairs he wobbles on. He so wobbles. we have to either get a Where chair or something. Where so. is he now? He, it's so funny because anytime we're about to shoot something, his energy is, I know you guys are about to do something really important, so I'm going to be up and about and go everywhere. So then he wants up on my lap. I put him on my lap. But then after like 20 minutes, he falls asleep. And then he sweats while he sleeps. That's our son. <laughs> That's our son. But yeah, we're figuring it all out. Thank you guys so much for coming on this adventure with us. We just love you. We appreciate you. And we love hearing from you. So... Thank you all so much, and uh, we will see you very soon.